Beatrix Potter's Gardening Life, The Plants and Places That Inspired the Classic Children's Tales by Marta McDowell provides an insightful look into the world of Beatrix Potter, an author best known for her beautifully illustrated children's books, which feature beloved characters such as Peter Rabbit and Jemima Puddle Duck. This book, however, focuses on another of Potter's passions, gardening. Through this lens, McDowell explores the life of the author and the ways in which her deep connection to the natural world and horticulture influenced her enchanting tales. Born into a Victorian family of means, Beatrix Potter enjoyed a childhood rich with long holidays in the countryside. These experiences in places like Scotland and the Lake District instilled in her an early and profound love of flora and fauna. The author details how these landscapes left an indelible mark on Potter's imagination and how elements of these environments would later become integral to her stories. McDowell digs into Potter's life, starting from her restricted upbringing in London, where her contact with plants and gardens was limited to those found at her family's house and at the various estates they visited. Despite these limitations, young Beatrix was a keen observer of nature, a theme that would define her later work both as an illustrator and a writer. McDowell pays particular attention to Potter's personal herbarium and her interest in scientific illustration, showing how Potter's appreciation for botany and talent for painting natural subjects earned her respect, even in male-dominated scientific circles. The book steps through Potter's evolution from an amateur botanist and artist to a beloved author-illustrator. McDowell explains how Potter's first book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit, was initially a letter sent to a former governess's child. The story's success opened the door to a series of books that would endear her to generations. Potter's narratives often featured gardens and natural settings, demarcated with rich botanical details that reflected her profound knowledge of and attention to plants. These settings weren't just backdrops for animal antics, but were integral to her characters' lives and adventures. The author also delves into the mature years of Potter's life after she became financially independent due to the success of her books. With this independence, Beatrix engaged more deeply with the land, becoming a farmer and conservationist. Potter and her husband William Helis eventually settled in the Lake District, where they worked on preserving the natural landscapes she so dearly cherished. The book explains how Potter became an accomplished sheep breeder and a supporter of the National Trust, using the profits from her books to buy large swathes of land that she later bequeathed to the conservation charity. McDowell does not neglect Potter's work in her own gardens, devoting attention to her experiments with various plants and her efforts to cultivate a garden that would serve both aesthetic and practical purposes. Beatrix Potter's gardening efforts at Hilltop her first farm, and later at Castle Cottage reflect her devotion to the English style of informal, bountiful gardens, an emblem of the arts and crafts movement of the time. Her gardens were both a source of inspiration and solace for Potter, and they provided the setting for many scenes in her stories. In detailing the specific plants that caught Potter's fancy, the book touches upon how these plants featured in her stories, either as hiding places for her characters or as crucial elements of the plot. McDowell includes references to specific stories and characters, demonstrating how intertwined Potter's observations of plants were with her narrative conceptions. Beatrix Potter's gardening life is filled with lush descriptions of the gardens Potter tended and the wilds she explored, with an abundance of photographs and Potter's own illustrations to give a rich visual sense of the natural beauty that so captivated her. The author also provides a month-by-month -month account of what was growing in Potter's gardens during the year, offering a sense of the changing seasons that were so integral to her life and work. The book paints a picture of Beatrix Potter that goes beyond her identity as a children's author and sheds light on her as a naturalist, a gardener, a farmer, and a conservationist. McDowell portrays Potter as a figure whose creativity was entwined with her love for the natural world, and whose legacy extends into the realms of environmental protection and landscape preservation. Throughout the book, one gains not only a deeper understanding of Potter's personal connection with the plant world, 
but also an appreciation for how that connection was artfully woven into the fabric of her enduring tales. For anyone interested in the life and work of Beatrix Potter, or in the intersection of literature and horticulture, McDowell's book provides a comprehensive and enchanting exploration of the plants and places that helped shape some of the most iconic children's literature of all time. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description. <laughs>